Welcome to the World Forum on Democracy at Institute of Cultural Diplomacy. Today we have with us Dr. Rand Bargatyan. He is the former Prime Minister of Armenia and an economist as well. Sir, welcome to ICD's World Forum on Democracy. Thank you, sir. And uh, we have a few questions for you uh, as, as a part of this conference. I would like my friend to ask, uh, to begin with those questions and then later I would join also. Thank you for joining us for this interview. Mm -hmm. So my first question will be, some of your most important work have been in the field of mega economics. Can you explain this to us and explain its importance in a globalization world and decision making? Yeah, mega economics is very important. It's not a macroeconomics, it's a mega economics. Mega economics. What it says, it says, you know, imagine that you, we have a very good growth of economy in Austria. But we have to think, maybe this growth was cheating from Switzerland, from Deutschland. Any type of economic growth, economic figures should be judged environmentally, should be judged. Don't, if you are harming the growth in other countries, does it make a sense for the world, for the planet? We have one planet. Somebody is exploiting too much natural resources, getting 10% growth. But natural resources is not just belonging to this country. Tomorrow everybody is paying for them. This why I created this new direction in the economics, mega economics. And all figures over there, even measurement of the GDP, etc., they are different, they are different from the existing existing macro traditional macroeconomics uh, economic figures. Thank you for this impressive. I think uh, you, you made a very good point because uh, yeah, recently Germany has come up with a law uh, saying that the companies, the German companies operating in developing countries like Bangladesh or even in Africa uh, would be following the same German laws, environmental laws that they follow in Germany, which is I think very important. Yeah. So, so thank you for that point. The, yeah, yeah, that's important. Yeah. Very good. So my second question would be, um, you mentioned earlier that there is a need of reform in the post-World War global institution like UNSC, considering the contemporary global balance of power. What are some of the effective ways to achieve this? You mean, you mean what? The, the first sentence? I didn't uh, catch up that? The institution like UNSC, UNSC, uh, uh, yeah. uh, considering yeah, yeah. the... Co yes. Well, this is institutions. WTO, institutions of UN, IMF, World Bank, etc., etc., they, well, they cannot work any more efficiently. They cannot do that. Because the, everything has been changed. There is a tendency of regionalization. EU is a regional union. Russia is creating its regional union. Turan, Turkey is creating its, its regional union. India, I'm sure, will be in the 10 to 20 years. They're going to have their regional union with some small countries. The same is trying to do China. AUKUS have been created by the United States, Britain and Australia, etc. Et well, countries are going to be united by these regional unions and to have a dialogue via regional union, uh, regional union possibilities. Because a regional union means some the governance office, governmental offices for the region, economic offices, etc., etc. Well, yes, I wouldn't say as a representative of a small nation is that's very good, but that that what is is happening now. Thank you for your. You're extremely right because uh, you rightly said that even India is trying to become a member of a, a regional organization. Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. Yeah, it is, it, this, we have SARC, but although it's not functioning really well because, of course, the regional rivalries also exist. But we also have like a bigger regional organization now coming up, which is. Uh, India, US, Japan, and even Australia, we, we are investing a lot, not just on military, but also on scientific research and development. So you're extremely right, like uh, regional cooperation, and I think we, we, are, we are not going to see a global cooperation with just individual countries. We are going to see the uh, international co uh, cooperation with regional cooperation inside it, so, like different regional units, 
cooperating with each other, like EU with uh, maybe SARC or maybe BRICS. So we are going to see those developments soon. Uh, I'm going to just take you back to one of the points that you made about, uh, I would say, the green policies, uh, about uh, being environmentally aware. So uh, my, my point is, uh, I don't know if you were a green politician at, uh, at your time, but how do you see the future of green parties? Right now in Germany we have the green party in the, coalition, in the ruling coalition, but how do you see in the near future with uh, environmental, the threat of environmental change or climate change becoming more and more real, how do you see the future of green parties in Europe? I think they have to be changed. First of all, every party should be green because you should take care for the environment. Sure. Secondly, Greens now are at the power in Germany. Yeah? They are promising economic growth. The question is, when you are increasing the volumes of the economy, you are the decreasing of resources of the poor. So, politicians in the world remain in the frame of the of the country's limits, country's border. Mm -hmm. They don't think about the plan. Mm -hmm. Everybody understands. Faster you are growing, faster you are deploying planet. True. Yeah. True. It should be stopped. True. It's a time to talk on the quality of the. Planet. When we are saying that we will increase your living standard 5% each year, it's a wrong. We will hurt the planet where we are living. <laughs> Why we need that? True. True. But when we say we will not increasing the living standard, but we will trying to increase the quality, quality of the quality, parameters, yeah. that's, that's an approach. But to be like this, and in Germany also, as in every country, we have very clever politicians. But to do like this, you have to go out from your limitation of the country, country's borders. That is the issue. But in this case, all these international institutions, including UN, etc., et cetera, et cetera, they are not relevant. They are not relevant. That's why I'm trying to explain everybody, you know. So, uh, you know, as, and, uh, and, and when a politician understanding what I just said right now, but after that even continuing to say, let's increase the living standard, it's a corruption. This populism is a corruption. It's political corruption. Yeah. Uh, now, towards the end of this interview, I would like to uh, take back to take you back to the geographical position of Armenia because that is a very strategic location that you, your country is situated in and it also has a lot of history, not just history of um, glory but also history of conflicts uh, because the Soviet, it was the, uh, it was a uh, constituent member of the Soviet Union, as well Soviet Union as well and uh, due to the current crisis that we are seeing in Ukraine, uh, what do you think that, like, one of the former Indian Prime Ministers, you know, he always used to say that you can choose your friends, but you cannot choose your neighbors. So there are some limitations to various countries in this world who are situated geographically at um, like bordering a very big and powerful country like Russia, for example. So how do you see what policies should smaller neighboring countries should frame uh, when they border a country like Russia, what care they should take and also what is the role of the international community in this? How can we avoid a confrontation like this? You know, Armenia currently is a frontier of, let's say, not clash of behavior of different civilizations, different religions, Christianity, Shia, Islam, Sunni Islam, and different regional political unions like Russia, European Union, and Turan, Turkey. Turkey yes. Armenia is a great value for Turan because if you remove Armenia, Turkey and Azerbaijan and other Turkish states, they're going to join. Economically, politically, I'm not telling that they are going to kill us, etc., etc., but, but then again, we don't see any positive thing. 
Maybe it's possible in any way to find a language with them which are trying to do that. And I hope they will try to do so. I'm not sure. But I hope. Also, we have a traditional Russian influence. The interests of Russia, EU, and Turkey to run, in fact, are principally different. How, uh, uh, um, how to find this compromise? For that, Armenian politicians have to have a wisdom and have to be very careful, have to move very careful. We are not going to have an easy life, never. But do you see becoming a part of multilateral institutions as a solution for this? Like, do you think Today we have uh, institutions provide kind of a protection uh, to smaller states? Look, today we have a close relations with Russia. Without taking into consideration we are happy, we are not happy, etc., etc., we have to be careful and we have to, pro to, uh, to uh, protect these relations. Sure. Today we don't have relations with Turani world. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, we don't have it. The task is to try to create it. To try to create it. And today we don't know what to do with Europe. Europe is very active in Armenia. Armenia was uh, practically candidates of uh, um, uh, to be a membership, etc., etc. But these issues we have to move very carefully because nowadays there is a um, uh, there is a um, uh, confrontation between Russia and uh, Russia is sanctioned by Europe. We have to take into consideration. And the question mark is, what type of behave, what type of policy to have in order to meet the demands both, both sides? Difficult to answer. Let's, let's see what's, what's going to happen. Let's see how many, uh, how much clever we can be. I think uh, that sums up uh, our today's interview. Thank you so much for being there and for patiently answering all of our questions. I think we covered uh, various aspects, right, from the geographical location and conflicts uh, that Armenia may face in future to the green policies that Europe uh, is uh, going to face right now. So thank you. Thank you for your patient answers. And we look forward to having you again and again in ICD. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank, thank you, you guys. very much. Thank you for answering yeah. all our questions. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All the best to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure to be with you.